life has been very busy. So I've been getting back into painting in my sketchbook. I go on and off in phases of this. Sometimes I'm not as into it, but right now I am into it. I think it is such a great tool for artists. I've talked about it before, but if you're a painter, having a sketchbook to paint in is so healthy. To not worry about making a perfect masterpiece and just getting something down in some paper. I wanted to talk about exactly how I make this happen, so I'm showing you step by step how I paint in my sketchbook. And so I made this. It turned out very Lisa Frank, and honestly, I'm so down. I even made the rainbow sparkly. I just could not help myself. So if you want to make this painting, or if you want to know how to paint in your sketchbook in general, this is the video for you. Let's get into it. So here's the sketchbook I use. It's a Canson Mixed Media. I've also used watercolor sketchbooks. They also work great. The pages bend a little bit less. But I love this sketchbook because it's cheap, it does the job, it's got a ton of pages, it's portable, it's the 5.5 inch by 8.5 inch. It's just like the perfect size sketchbook. I've already been doing a bunch of sketchbook pages in here as you can see. I'm gonna get started on another one today just so I can show you exactly how I paint in my sketchbook. So a couple things to note before we fully dive in. Your sketchbook should be a place for you to experiment, to make mistakes. It should not be a book full of masterpieces. Do not expect it to be that. It's okay to have paintings in here that you don't love. Like, look at this. This one, I hate it. I hate it. It's garbage. I hate it. But guess what? It's a sketchbook, so it doesn't matter. I learned a lot from painting this painting. It didn't turn out exactly how I wanted, but like, I learned a lot, and it's a great record of all the things that I learned when I'm painting, even though it's not a painting that I love, so. Secondly, I get a lot of people asking me how I keep my pages from bending when I paint my sketchbook. The pages bend. They're gonna bend. They're gonna get a little warp, you can see how they curve like that. On mixed media paper, they bend a lot less than like a normal paper, and if you use watercolor paper, they bend even less than that. But just a thing to note, they're, you're gonna have some bendy pages. You're using a wet material on paper. Have realistic expectations. Again, it's not for masterpieces. So let your pages bend, let yourself make mistakes. We're just going to have fun, so. I'm just gonna paint a little cloud and then I'm probably gonna slap a rainbow on there because I love a rainbow. I have a little palette to mix on. This is just a little plastic palette that my friend actually gave me. I've got a palette knife. And I've got a little collection of brushes. These are my favorites recently. I have a whole bunch of brushes, as you can see, but I kind of lean towards specific ones. These have been my favorite for painting in sketchbook recently. I've got some flat brushes, angled brushes, a filbert brush, these are liners, these are miniature brushes, and I just have them all set right here so I can grab what I want. I'm using fairly cheap paint. I've got Artist Loft, I've got Hebio, Hebio? I think I bought this in a sale bin for like $2. And then I've got some Liquitex too. You can use whatever brands you want. All you need is a white, a blue, a yellow, and a red. I've got a couple little variations here. And then I've got a cup of water here. And then I've got a little rack. So I'm gonna get some color on my little palette. Boop. Whoa! That always happens to me with this paint tube. Like I said, get messy. Messes are okay. So that's what my little palette looks like. I've just got some colors for me to work with. I'm gonna do a little cloud and then blue sky and then probably a little rainbow going across in one direction. So I wanna mix up some sky first. And one thing I like to have in mind when I'm painting with paper in a sketchbook is that paper is super absorbent, so I can't have super high expectations for blending. It's hard to keep paint on this surface wet because the paper just soaks it in so fast. Instead of blending, I usually use more of like a layering style of blending. Just as a heads up, getting my brush a little bit wet, but not super wet, just enough as a vehicle to get my little paint onto my canvas. So I'm just gonna sketch out like a little cloud shape, get a little more water in there. Just enough for it to flow, but not so much that it is too much for my little paper. So let's get a little cloud on here. I'm kind of just sketching this in, using these kind of puppy shapes here. Sketching in a cloud shape I think I'd like to paint. And then I'm gonna fill in the rest with the solid blue color. You can see I'm using a fairly large brush for this because I want to Fill in this space fast. You can see already that the paint is starting to warp the paper. You can see it bending just a little bit. That's totally okay. There's nothing wrong with a little bit of bending on your paper. It's not gonna hurt nobody. There we go. Okay, so now let's put in some of maybe 
the shadows for our little cloud here. I'm going to add more white to this blue that we already have going on. And add just a little bit of magenta just to tweak the color a little bit. Make it a little. Just going to sketch in some of the more shadow parts of our cloud here. It goes up like this, across like that. You can see I'm using like this scraping, swishing method where I go in a circle. So these areas are going to have some shadow on them. So you can see I'm not adding very much water at all when I'm doing these paintings. Don't want it to just be soaking wet. But I do want stuff to flow. I'm adding more white so I can start to get some lighter shadows on. And I might start to switch to a different paintbrush in just a second so I have a little more control. Now that I've got all of the big spots of color blocked in. So I'm gonna to switch to a smaller brush in just a sec after I finish blocking in this color here. Take my same blue, just gonna add a little more white. I just wanna lighten this up so I have nice light shading colors. You can see me adding tiny touches of different colors. A little more water, just a little. This is a very, very light shadow color we've got going on here. Barely a shadow at all. Have some light coming up from under here. I'm actually going to darken this just a little so I can have a little more contrast on the shading of this cloud. Yeah, like that. So we can get some more of these shadows going a little bit more, a little more defined. You can take as much time as you want with this. I'm just sketching this in. I'm not really worrying too much about all the nitty gritties. I'm going to add some more dark shadowed areas. Tapping it off so it's not too much. A little bit of a darker shadow going on here. Get the contrast a little higher in some of these shadowed areas. Little circle brush motions. I like to do this when I'm making clouds. It gets a really cute, fluffy effect. Now I'm going to start with some of my highlights. I'm going to use this filbert brush, taking pure white there. Starting to build our highlights nice and defined, adding a little more details to the puppy parts of our cloud. And I'm not using any water at all on this, it's just straight paint. Adding these highlights in places. I know the sun's going to hit, so the sun's hitting a little bit from behind in this direction. So those are the areas, those top parts of the puffs are where I'm going to put my little highlights. Make them look real pretty and puffy. Don't worry about making them too contrasty. They're mostly to create some dimension. The subtler your highlights are, the fluffier and rounder and softer your clouds are gonna look. Sometimes you want super contrasty highlights and sometimes you don't. Just depends on what you're looking for. Um, I wanna add in a rainbow but I didn't think too hard about my composition about adding a rainbow in. I kind of want to put it here, but I don't want to mess up the diagonal of this. So I'm thinking about adding it here and then maybe putting some stars and a little moon right there, just for fun. I'm going to do a really light 
white wash just to give me an idea of where my rainbow's gonna go. This is gonna use just a little more water than we've been using before. It just gives me an idea of where my rainbow's gonna be. And then before we do a rainbow, I'm just gonna throw in some stars and a moon. I always want a moon and stars in my, my cloud paintings. It just makes me happy. And I'm also just gonna do some little itty bitty dots. Really tiny, let me zoom in for you. I don't know if you're gonna be able to see them because I like them really itty bitty. The smaller your stars, the more realistic they look. Tiny little pinpricks. So I wanna put in my little rainbow now. I've got a different red here. I'm gonna use a different red just because I have it on hand. Use whatever red you've got. And then let's get this on there. Trying to make a nice, fairly even line all the way across like that. Yeah, so I want it to be fairly even all the way. About the same thickness the whole time, but again, this is a very quick sketchbook painting, so I'm not that concerned about it. Now I want to switch to an orange. Same thing. And then from here, I'm just gonna add whatever details I feel like. So I kind of want to define the stars a little more. I might add a little more contrast to the clouds. I'm just gonna go with whatever I feel like. I went crazy and added some sparkles to my rainbow. Define the stars just a little bit more. And that's my sketchbook page. It's not very cool yet. <laughs> I hope that video was helpful for you. As always, if you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. People who support me on Patreon are getting the full unedited version of this video. I've also got some new Patreon rewards coming up in the future, so watch out. If you have any requests for things you'd like to see in videos, let me know in the comments below too. I'll see you in the next video.